G'day, Alistair here. This here is my media PC. It is a dual core, oh sorry, dual socket system. So you've got two sockets down here, uh, 20 cores and 40 hardware threads. So this is made up of two, uh, as we can see, E5 2670 V2s. And that represents a reasonable amount of performance. There is absolutely no reason I need to be using it for a media PC, it's way overkill, but uh, um, it's a good way of uh, testing it out. And uh, what I have here is, that is uh, four E5 2680 V2s. So they are basically the same. Um, if I bring a uh, this window over, we can see that basically the uh, base clock and boost clock are better, but only, uh, well, I suppose a little bit. So 300 megahertz. And it does mean, in theory, there should be about a 10%, 10%, 11% uh, performance improvement, at least CPU-wise. It's, of course, not going to affect any of the I.O. or memory speed or anything like that. But its ability to do number crunching will be uh, a little bit improved. And this, if we come down, there's some um, benchmarks. We can see 11.5% uh, in pass mark. Uh, Geek Bench 15 and Multi Core 15. So it's going to de depend on um, the use case of the CPU. But I'm going to go ahead and upgrade those and uh, plug them in and see if I can get the machine running a tiny bit faster. So let's go ahead and do that. This case is a Be Quiet Silent Bass 601 with a sound dampening side panel with acoustic foam rather than tempered glass. I forget if you're going to get a quiet case you may as well go all in. We need to remove the coolers to replace the CPUs obviously and we'll start by unclipping the fans on these Hyper 212s. I quite like how these fans clip on easily rather than wrestling with those wire clips that are often used and we can just set the fans aside without unplugging them. I'm unscrewing the screws in a crisscross pattern to maintain even pressure on the CPU. This is crucial when installing the cooler to ensure a uniform layer of thermal paste, but it's good practice when removing it too. I'm wiping off the old paste with a paper towel. If the paste is dry, I'll use some isopropyl alcohol to loosen it. This paste, however, is fresh, so it comes off fairly easily. Be careful not to smear the paste on other parts. It's not harmful as it's not conductive, but it can be hard to clean. To remove the old CPU, you'll need to release both levers in the correct order. And you can only do this one way because the first lever locks the second in place. Once unlocked, you can lift the hatch and carefully lift out the old CPU. Take care not to bend any of the pins inside the socket. Installing the new CPU is pretty easy. Make sure you are installing it in the correct orientation. I made sure to place the new CPU in the same orientation before I began, but if you get stuck, there is a triangle indicator on both the CPU and the hatch. Remember, those pins are delicate and they are difficult to straighten if bent. Finally, engage the levers to secure the CPU. Next up, thermal paste. I'm using too much here. In theory, you only need a small blob in the center, but these Xeon CPUs are quite large. A bit too much is a lot better than not enough. I purchased three large tubes from AliExpress about five years ago, and I'm a bit over halfway through the first tube. As you can see, I'm doing the standard crisscross pattern to secure the cooler. These Hyper 212s are a bit overkill. I've never been able to get the CPUs over 53 degrees Celsius, but it does allow the fans to run very quietly.
I'm making sure that I match the orientation of the new CPU using the markings on the CPU and hatch. Apologies for the terrible handheld work here. You can see the instructions for unlocking the CPU on the hatch and that the second lever is locked until you release the first. Out with the old CPU and in with the new. When locking the new CPU down, make sure that the first lever captures the hatch with the bar going over the tab on the left side of the socket. Here you can see that the bar is not capturing the hatch and everything is still very loose. Slide the first lever under the hook to lock the lever in place. Then it's just a matter of locking the second lever down. This time a much more reasonable amount of thermal paste, although I'm still being quite generous. One of the uh, standoff screws has come away with the cooler, so I just want to reattach it to the motherboard first. I seem to have much more trouble aligning the screws this time. Hopefully with the cooler moving around a lot, I haven't got any thermal paste where it shouldn't be. And finally, I just need to reclip the fans back onto those towers. The fans are blowing to the back of the case, and even with hot air being blown onto the second CPU, it's only a couple of degrees hotter than the first. Next up, we want to make sure that everything is okay before we seal up the case. So I'm connecting power, display, mouse, keyboard, and network. As you can see, we've booted up Windows just fine, and I'm just gonna start the task manager. And I'm surprised to see my 2680s not being displayed in the task manager. However, CPU-Z reports things correctly. It's been a few days now, and everything is running fine. We can see that task manager is now correctly reporting the correct CPU type, uh, uh, which is exactly the same as what CPU-Z is reporting. Now, in terms of performance, uh, the results are not that great. Uh, <laughs> they're okay. So Geekbench, I've got about a 5% uh, increase in performance between single and multi-core, although it does seem to vary quite a lot um, between runs. But, and you can see some things are up and some things are down. So uh, I suppose it depends on what the computer is also doing in the background at the time. The other benchmark I tend to use quite a lot is Cinebench. And there's about a 5.5% uh, improvement on single core and 6.5% on multi core performance. So, pretty much similar, similar to, to, to Geekbench. So, yeah, I've gained, you know, 5 or 6% extra performance. It's not overly exciting. I thought I'd get a little bit more than that. And there might be circumstances where that, that is the case. But, yeah, probably for everyday things, I'm probably not going to notice any difference in performance at all. Uh, but that is just fine. Now, I did test out some ECC memory in there as well, and measured some performance, and that is going to be the subject of a future video, because there's some interesting results there. So, I hope you found this video informative, going from uh, 2670 V2s to 2680 V2s, not, not a great performance uplift, maybe going to 2690s uh, would be a better option. But um, uh, yeah, I got these really cheap, so they're, they're, they're about 5 or $6 each. Um, that's New Zealand dollars as well, so <laughs> so maybe 4 US dollars. So they're, um, uh, yeah, they're pretty cheap. Anyhow, I'll see you in the next video. I'm Alistair, and uh, have a great day.